Ooh, Crown's tier list rating is out. Let's take a look. S, S, S. Yup. S, S, S. Yup. And ass, ass, ass. All right. Hey, everyone, Tomaz here. And welcome to another Nikkei video. So, Crown, yes, her tier list rating is finally out on both Pridewind as well as Nikkei.gg, two of the most famous global sites for Nikkei content. And uh, yes, without a doubt, she belongs in the top tier meta SSS category. Now, uh, Pridewind has already written their full review of the character. And we'll take a look in this video, the breakdown, and alongside Nikkei.gg's pre-release i think this is day one release uh comment uh because they will release a full guide later on i believe but so far this is pretty detailed already so we'll take a look at both articles and it's always good to compare because um actually all of us drew the same conclusion if you look at my own video that i released previously it's called crown the true queen of b2 yes that's right she is so so damn good and in the sss tier even through my day one testing there's no doubt about about how strong she is so yeah it's good to see that she does belong in the ass 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 category now first things first probably the most question i get in the comment down below is regarding whether or not i should be pulling or going for multiple copies and yes the answer is right here absolutely one single copy and because of how many free pulls we're getting at the moment you can see we just got another 10 tickets for stellar blade yes another game by shift up and we got previously another 10 from um the nikkei hitting number one in the japanese ios store so there are loads loads of free pulls coming up on top of the already I think 70 or 86 pulls that would be getting this patch uh, on the crown banner because of the 21 free pulls. So there are tons, tons of opportunity for you to get a single copy of crown that I would say just grab a copy at your earliest convenience if you have to use mileage. Definitely, definitely recommend it because the pilgrims are 1% instead of the usual 2% rate up. So go for that. And because we have so many pulls on the crown banner, you can then decide if you want to max limit break or not or go for dupes. As for the dupes, they do make a little comment here regarding as Crown does give casters attack buff, your buff will be uh, equivalent to the Crown's base stats, which means no overload gear lines, but the overload gear stats, bond level, and dupe uh, percentages will be added to this buff. However, for the free-to-play guys out there, and again, I made a video about this regarding if you are able to keep your crown a base copy without bond, without uh, chest pieces, upgraded overload, you might be able to benefit from Naga 100% uptime heal on crown. So you have that 21% damage buff. Uh, I explain it in greater detail in the video, so go check it out. Now, let's take a look at Pridewind's kit analysis so basically i love this comment here in the history of nikkei crown is the most balanced but at the same time most broken character out there and i think they're drawn to the fact that uh, basically she is a single unit that can do the job of two dual support unit that are currently at the top of the meta right so we've got naga and tia and we've got the blanc and noir okay these are above the meta line uh, meta line on the pride one tier list and they're the best best duels out there so they have been dominating your team one team twos for the longest time but crown herself as a single unit pretty much can do their job and ironically crown plus naga as i like to call it the uh, the royal naga is better combo wise than Tia plus Naga. <laughs> oh my god. So, uh, with that said, she is truly, truly one of the best units we have seen for a burst to character. But um, there are uh, some caveats that we need to understand. First of all, um, they all go over her skill here. And one of the power creep that we have on auto is that Crown is able to target raptures that cannot be normally targeted by non manual attacks. This is especially clear in later chapters where some of the units seemingly camouflage themselves and cannot be targeted when you're not doing it manually. So Crown is able to power creep through this and uh, even on auto hit these units. And because she is able to target them, then during the full burst, her allies will also be targeting the same enemies and uh, they are certainly allowed to hit those camouflage units as well. So uh, even for the lazy people like me, this is already a huge, huge bonus. Now, I'm not going to over the rest of the skill kit. I've already covered it in the rest of my other crown video, but some things I definitely want to point out uh, is that uh, level 10 skill 1 with a level 7 or more resilience cube completely negates 
the machine gun wind up. You can see here, even though quality is not that great, that uh, Crown here does not lose any of the uh, wind up speed. So you can see we're firing at max fire rate, and even if we reload at near the max firing rate, we don't lose it because the reload is so fast, which is really, really strong because this really helps every single machine gun user out there, including herself, to not lose that ramp up speed, which is so key, especially if the enemy will be jumping around. You can just aim at the air to make sure you don't lose that as well and the reloading was gonna be the only thing that could interrupt it but with the reload speed that's coming out from crown's buff and a resilience cube that will be gone as well now looking at the second skill this is very cool okay this is very cool and we turn our eyes into uh, i believe they uploaded here to yeah here the second skill you can time it against enemy bossy mechanics and you will be able to basically ignore a huge barrage so here we go we wait and we do the taunt with the skill too and we have invulnerability and look at this completely ignoring the mechanics of this boss and you can see that the quick scope alice during full burst is not reloading at all because she is at max ammo so all of you gaming share alice look at this I know you can't really see, but it's basically max, max, max ammo the entire way. So undoubtedly belong in the SSS tier category and uh, you can abuse the taunt a lot more and pretty much be invulnerable and draw the attention of the bosses and dodge a lot of the mechanics. Now they've said that um, the crown burst is a 20 second shield that also activates Naga's skill one core damage and these are individual shields which are obviously better than the Senti single shield as well as Arya and Folk one who are 40 second shielders rather than the 20 second one so uh, 15 second attack damage and 15 second shield duration is absolutely insane this this is pretty much permanent uptime okay so again as in summary you are going to get attack damage attack buff reload speed that negates the wind up downside of machine gun users and then you're gonna get attack di increase a taunt and a vulnerability to skip some boss mechanics and shield and attack damage buff in the final burst that also synergizes with existing units like t i mean this is there's no wonder why she belongs in every single ss tier category the story high to low deficit and boss solo and boss situations with as the only thing is of course pvp in which yeah unfortunately the ramp up to 43 hits to get the taunt in the vulnerability is just a bit too slow and she's a machine gun user who are innately not so great in uh, pvp so overall again one of the best units ever released you can just see all of the ratings here okay honestly so strong but in its current stage i would say that uh, the duels are still going to be used as duels uh, in the union raid solo raid because crown does so much you probably don't want to separate your uh, nagatia just so that you can have a slightly better nagatia you will just have crown in the third team or whichever team you want to run and in terms of gear you could not upgrade the chest piece and the I do want to point out one more thing. A lot of people worry about the overload aspect and uh, taking full advantage of the Naga aspect of the heal. Now, key, key thing. Don't worry too much about it because uh, the thing is, you're only missing, I would say, about half the downtime of the attack damage buff, which is 21%. It's significant, yes, but uh, you're also gimping a lot of your stats, and the crown's stats does scale with home caster's attack. So uh, if you're not upgrading your crown, not getting dupes, not overloading, you do miss out on some of the attacks, and also you're not going to be guaranteed always to be the lowest HP. And in story, which is where this uh, Naga Royal Naga comp is used, crown may not be um, high enough of a CP to uh, justify the debuff that will be given to you if you don't upgrade even if you have the materials and whatnot so lots of things in play and i wouldn't not stress it too much um it's honestly just very very small min maxing and uh, it's really not going to affect you outside of this maybe 0.1 percent of the player population so just wanted to make sure that uh, you understand that now in terms of the gear investment if you are going for overload 
um, you can go for overload on the ammo on the element advantage and attack this is pretty much the standard for any machine gun users is ammo capacity ellie and attack up now skill investment wise 444777 and 101010 10, 10. uh pvp you can do 747 and 10410 but uh, ideally she's one that you want to go full all in and uh she's gonna be worth it she's gonna be worth it but good to see that the recommendations are pretty much the same all the way across in terms of 777 and 101010 10, 10 across the two sides now cubes pretty much the only viable cube for crown and her teammates are going to be resilience we did see the jp meta where uh, people were running hp cubes to try to push crown to be the lowest hp on the team now uh, with the naga the royal naga comp um yeah it could work it could work that is also one aspect and two tve uh, pve team comps are going to be all in on alice so this is one that i saw basically you run the privity comp with alice and either red hood or modenia and either litter or d and this combination is the one we saw in which there is zero reload right here so this is again the comp that was used so look at alice and she is not going to reload infinite ammo alice you don't even need overload gear in terms of max ammo capacity on alice in this comp so everyone's Alice, if you got the gaming chair, if you got the speed, is just basically much, much stronger now. And the other god comp, the new campaign best in slot, like we said, is going to be Crown plus Naga. Or like many of you have commented down below, Rapunzel, because Rapunzel's heal, if Crown is in slot one, will always go to Crown if everyone's at uh, full HP. So uh, you're going to have permanent uptime on this 21% damage buff. So uh, yeah, this is a team composition, either Naga or Rapunzel, and either Litter or D, and the Crown and their TB3s are usually Modernia plus Red Hood for a campaign. So uh, all in all, the breakdown of Crown, yes, everyone should be having a copy, and uh, I would suggest going for multiple, multiple copies as well. So what do you think? Do you think she deserves the SSS tier list rating on cross basically both Pride One as well as Nikki.gg? Or do you think that uh, she is a bit overhyped? Let me know your thoughts down below, and I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye now.